Cold gas dynamic spraying, or cold spray as it's commonly referred to, is an additive manufacturing technique. It is classified as a thermal spraying technique. However, due to the fact that you do not melt the powders or bring them close to melting point, the process is considered cold. In most thermal spraying techniques, you end up heating the powder particles to melting point in order for them to adhere to the substrate. However, with cold spray, instead you accelerate the particles to supersonic speed in order for them to bond to the substrate. There are two main types of cold spray machine. Firstly, high pressure and low pressure cold spray. High pressure cold spray uh, generally operates at around 50 bar and this type of uh, machine will be able to spray the majority of metals including steel. One of the drawbacks with high pressure cold spray is that unfortunately it has very large amounts of wear that happens to some of the components. So specifically the nozzles uh, erode very quickly and hence the process is expensive to run. At the Witz labs our cold spray machine is classified as low pressure. Low pressure cold spray machines tend to be better at spraying ductile materials such as zinc, magnesium or copper. There will still be some level of wear uh, at the lower pressures uh, but nowhere near as much as with the uh, high pressure cold spray machine. This specific cold spray machine operates generally at around 10 bar and if you use a um, pressure booster that sits behind the machine you can boost it to 18 bar. Cold spray operates by generating pressure using a compressor. That pressure is then piped to a nozzle, specifically a De Laval uh, converging diverging nozzle. When the air uh, passes through the De Laval nozzle, it accelerates to supersonic speed. Into the nozzle, a powder feeder will feed uh, very finely ground powder particles into the supersonic component of the jet. This is generally post constriction. Those powder particles are then carried in the supersonic uh, flow to supersonic speeds. Those powder particles then impinge on the substrate and will start to build up layers. The kinetic energy uh, contained within these powder particles causes adiabatic shear instabilities to form at the point of impact uh, where the powder particle impinges on the substrate. This causes micro welds to be formed and the particle will then adhere to the substrate. It's important to note that the powder particles do not melt. Uh, it is more of a sintering process that occurs. There are some interesting applications regarding remachining damaged components. When you are dealing with helicopter gearboxes, often what happens during operation is that one of the components starts to wear or some damage occurs to one of the components which causes the entire gearbox to be thrown away. Now these gearboxes are generally made of magnesium or magnesium alloys and Unfortunately, they are exceptionally expensive. So if wear happens, they just get thrown away. However, with cold spray, what happens is you can build up layers of material on the damaged spot, and then you can take it for remachining, and the gearbox then can be put back into use, whereas before it would simply have been wasted. There have been some interesting projects that have happened within the Witz lab. One of the most high profile projects would have been an antimicrobial surface 
uh, that was created by cold spraying copper. And this coating was able to neutralize bacteria. Another really interesting process that was investigated here was creating hyperporous materials. Now, porous materials have many applications, including in catalysts. The students created hyperporous materials by mixing two different metal powders together, cold spraying them, and then selectively dissolving one of the metals. And this would leave gaps where the dissolved metal was. And it created exceptionally porous materials, which is fantastic. Another interesting project that was done here was creating multi-layer low-pass filtering uh, using cold spraying. In this project, what occurred was uh, using skin and proximity effects, high-frequency signal was pushed into resistive layers of the multi-layer conductors, reducing the amount of high-frequency signal moving through the conductor. Cold spray is a relatively new technology. And as a result, divergent research can be done um, to figure out which specific items most benefit from the cold spraying process. The cold spray machine has two distinct booths. You have the manual handgun, which sits in this booth. It's not often used due to the fact that you can't accurately uh, create an offset off of your uh, substrate. And offset is something that is quite important when you're trying to get reproducibility of results. Um, on the other side here, we have an automatic gun, which uses um, an XY coordinate robot that uh, will move it in the X and Y plane. Um, you will, if you want to adjust offset, it is a manual process where you have to uh, undo certain screws and shift the gun downward. In order to spray, or the way that this all operates, I'll just explain to you how this all works. Your pressure uh, will be coming from your control box through the uh, powder or the, the air heater. Um, this will heat it to whatever temperature you wish your carrier gas to be heated to. And you will have a powder line which will feed in just post nozzle constriction, uh, which will then allow those powder particles to be accelerated to supersonic speed and they will then impinge on the substrate and adhere to the substrate. So if you want to initialize the compressor, there's a couple of steps that you have to follow. If there is an error message that is displayed on screen, you will need to uh, cancel the error message like this. You will also need to make sure that the pressure requirements that the cold spray machine uh, requires will be met. Um, and after that, you will need to press the green engage button like this. Another thing that you need to pay attention to when operating this machine is that the emergency stop is disengaged because if the emergency stop is engaged like that, um, the machine will not run. In cold spraying, it's important to have dry compressed air that uh, mixes with the powders. This is due to the fact that if there is moisture in the compressed air, it tends to wet the powders and it causes them to clump together or agglomerate. So you have to ensure that the air dryer is switched on before you operate the machine. Okay. When dealing with uh, powders, generally you need to use gloves if they're toxic 
In this case, we are pouring silicon carbide into the powder feeder, which is non-toxic. Always wear a mask when dispensing powders. The powder feeders are split into two. There is a powder feeder one and powder feeder two. I will be dispensing into powder feeder one. I'm busy now setting the parameters of the machine. I've just set the temperature. I'm now going to set the feed rate, which is a percentage 60 should do. And I'm going to set the air pressure at 140. As you can see, all the temperatures are set. Okay, we're just going to switch the nozzle on. During that uh, cold spray, we sprayed silicon carbide, which is a very hard material, onto an aluminium substrate, aluminium being quite soft. It's important to note that you aren't going to be able to build up layers uh, using this technique because silicon carbide is not a ductile material. So, but in the case of this, it was just to demonstrate that you will get deposition onto a substrate. As you can see here, it has made a very fine layer on top here. If you had to uh, put this under an electron microscope, you would see uh, wedging happening into the surface of the aluminium. When you're dealing with spraying copper, you will have a distinct thick layer that will form. I'd like to say thank you for watching and hopefully we will get you involved in some interesting cold spray projects in the future.